Hello, welcome to Accounting Hub. I'm Professor George Scarpin, PhD in Accounting, and our topic today is Adjusting Merchandise Inventory. We will talk a little bit about purchase, but if you want a full video about purchase, we have it, and the link is in our video description. Okay, and guys, subscribe to our channel. It is very good to, to us and also very good to you. You will be the first one to know when a new video arrives and share it with your friends, with your colleagues, and so on. So measuring inventory. A list of assets usually containing the value of individual items is called an inventory. What is the, in the difference between inventories and supplies? Inventories, we sell it. Supplies, we use it. For instance, paper uh, on an office, we use it. Soda in a grocery store, we sell it. Okay? So the goods a business has on hand for sale to customers is called merchandise inventory. And we have two methods. And perpetual, an inventory determined by keeping a continuous record of increases, decreases, and the balance on hand of each item of merchandise is called a perpetual inventory. Usually, large, comp large companies, they work on that. However, small companies, that is our topic here, they use periodic inventory method. A merchandise inventory evaluated at the end of a fiscal year is called a periodic inventory. When a periodic inventory is conducted by counting, weighting, or measuring items of merchandise on hand, it is called physical inventory. So, we have our beginning inventory, we have our purchase, and then we find the physical inventory and we measure it in US dollars. We have the ending inventory, the cost of goods sold, that is the amount of a business pay for goods it purchased to sell, the cost of merchandise, we find it by difference. And then, how do we do that? So, first of all, let's record the purchase. So, let's go to our Excel file. Transaction 1. To make it pretty. Merchandise purchase. On December 6th, Purchase mer merchandise on account from Win Lightning Purchase Invoice number 525. So, what is our journal entry here? December 6th, debit purchase, 1,082.50 and credits accounts payable. We go to our purchase journal and then we list all of our purchase. This one here. Let go on green. It is the first one here. And then we list all of our other ones. And then at the end of the year, our total purchase is 20,153. Purchase. This is our purchase journal. This is our purchase uh, records. Here, what is the difference? We have debits and credit. We will be working with this credit later. Okay? This is our purchase ledger here. And accounts payable. We will not be working with that. So, we have here, again, our record. And here, our record. And then, inventory. Let's assume this beginning balance here, 5,326. So, how do we do, how do we move our number from purchase to income summary or cost of goods sold? The amount of inventory on hand at the beginning of a fiscal year or fiscal period is called beginning inventory. That is our beginning inventory here, 5,326. So, let's come here, beginning inventory, 5,326. Good. 
Later, during the period merchandise is purchased and merchandise is sold. To determine how much merchandise remains in inventory at the end of the period, a fiscal inventory is conducted. And the actual count of merchandise at the end of a fiscal period is called an ending inventory. So here we have our purchase. Our purchase. Total of purchase here, 20,153. And our ending inventory here, 4,658. How do we find the cost of goods sold? There is a formula. Beginning inventory plus purchase, less ending inventory. Quite hard to memorize it, but let's think about it. Let's work with physical inventory instead of monetary one. Let's consider our beginning inventory is 10 units. We purchase five more. So we have 15 units after our purchase. If our ending inventory is only one, that means that we sold the 14 units remaining. So that is our formula. So, okay, we need some adjusting entries here. And then your instructor will give you the ending inventory. However, we have no journal entry for ending inventory. The ending inventory here, let's say it's the blue number, must be the ending balance of inventory. It must be this one here, if I'm not wrong. So, let's do it. What do we do first? We move purchase from purchase from this purchase here to inventory. How do we do that? Purchase is a debit account. We need to take this number off, so we will credit purchase. So here, December 31st, we will credit purchase. How much? We will credit the total purchase here, 20,153. What is our debit? We are increasing our inventory, so our debit will be inventory. The same, 20,000. Let's record it in journal. So purchase journal, it is not a new purchase. However, purchases here, December 31st. Come on. December 31st, it is the, we are moving to inventory, a credit. 20,000. And then let's copy and paste here. Now, nothing. And purchase, it is a temporary account, so we must close it. And now, inventory. December 31st. It is the item is the purchase. And how much? We are debiting inventory 20,153. Ah, the numbers are not matching yet. Our cost of goods sold is 20. So now we record the cost of goods sold or income, income summary. Also December 31st, it is an expense. We are reducing our income. Income, the normal balance, is a credit. So to reduce it, we debit. Income, summary, and let's do here, double asterisk here, or cost of good 
sold. Okay, so this is this cost of goods sold here. So let's work the same name as our PowerPoint. Cost of goods sold. So de depending on your textbook, depending on your structure, and so on. And it reduces our ending inventory. So our credit will be inventory because now we want to find the ending inventory. So here, beginning inventory plus purchase less cost of goods sold or income summary depending on your textbook it will be equal oops ending inventory that is beginning inventory plus purchase less ending inventory and here whoops Cost of goods sold not right. Cost of goods sold is here. It will match. So we need to record now the cost of goods sold. So here, $2,821. $2,821. We have no journal here for the income summary. We don't need it. However, inventory. Again. And here the income summary or cost of goods sold. Now a credit. We are crediting inventory. How much? 2821. 4658. 4658. So no. So no journal entries for the ending inventory okay and here we can also write it here let me go downstairs oh yep if we want to adjusting entries these are these two are adjusting entries now it's pretty okay guys so questions or comments just Leave it here or email me at jscarping at gmail.com. Thank you so much for watching this video. Have a very nice day and God bless you.